Before the pandemic, every day I drop my kids off at daycare and school by 8 a.m. and Suvin goes to work and I have the house all to myself for a few hours. But right now we have a house full of boys. <laughs> we have a two-year-old and we have a 13-year-old and we have a 40-some-year-old too. <laughs> and so the house is very full at, and very chaotic at all times. The two-year-old is up early in the morning and full of energy running around. He does not walk, he runs everywhere. The new teenager, he just turned 13, he is um, doing some online schooling. He's such a great big brother and he can babysit for us as well. And then Suvan is teaching still full-time to his students all around the world actually. Then in the afternoon, we try to go out and um, take a short walk so that we're still getting some fresh air. And other than that, we're just staying at home and doing puzzles and watching movie and trying to read. But it's been really wonderful and we treasure this family time together, which we didn't really have, you know, being on the road or one of us is teaching or one of us is away and we don't get to have meals together. So it's been really wonderful to just have that family time. Thank you for this food. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you. For this food. Thank you. For the yummy food. Amen. My favorite part of every day is putting my two-year-old to bed because <laughs> it takes a while but you know just the bonding and just him talking nonsense and snuggles there's nothing in the world like it even though this time at home has been a juggling act i really wanted to spend some time to do some self-reflection and to confront some of the issues I have in my playing. I've never been one that's comfortable looking at my own footage. I see that there is a layer of fear, fear of failure, fear of making mistakes and disappointing people. And I feel like that's really kind of handicapped me. This time at home, we are forced <laughs> to look into the camera a lot, you know, even just to hang out with our friends. We have to see ourselves a lot. And um, so I thought, okay, this time I need to do something about it. So I started putting a mirror next to my piano when I practice. And my first realization was that what I see in the mirror um, it's different from my own self-image, which is quite inadequate. The mirror is now my audience, <laughs> it used to be my uh, worst critic, and now it's kind of a sounding board for me. And I hope someday it will become a friend, maybe, and hopefully it will be very freeing when that happens. In any case, this time at home was just time and space to really think and to dig deep into these things um, allowed me to at least take a small step in the right direction. So I'm hopeful and uh, I'm grateful for this time of kind of self-exploration. <laughs> and Two things that really struck me during this time is finding a purpose in life and also human connection. And you know, we've all been trained um, since we're very young to be good at one thing, to be really, really good at one thing. And we have that purpose. And now the concerts are being taken away. Um, there's no audience. And I think part of the equation is struggling to find what our purpose is during this time. I just remember how I was struck um, when I first 
saw the image of a nurse and her face being bruised from wearing goggles all day and masks all day. You know, I just kept thinking, what can I do? Um, I only know how to play the piano. I don't know how to do anything else, but how can I help? Thank you. We're so grateful to everybody in the medical community. For your courage, for your tireless care. Notes of Hope is Boston Musicians' response to the pandemic. It's Boston Musicians' way of showing our gratitude for our Boston medical workers. So every day at 7 p.m., we will stream a short performance by a Boston musician or a group of musicians to four major Boston hospitals. We're actually gonna clap at the end, but we're not clapping for us, we're clapping for you. And I didn't expect this, but the result is incredibly powerful. On the very first night when we broadcast the performance and one of the nurses wrote on Facebook and say thank you for this music and I've been working in the unit all week and this is just what I needed. And for me, that's, that's it, that's all, all um, that I needed to do this project and to know that it's worthwhile and that it has touched somebody there directly. Thank you. At the same time, the musician's response is something I did not expect, but it's just as powerful. I get messages saying thank you for giving our identity back as musicians. I can just feel that we all really need this right now. Music heals, music connects, music uplifts, and at the end of the day, I think music can play a really important role in all of this, and we just have to find ways where we can contribute and make it just a bit more tolerable during this time for everyone.